to working and leading in a virtual team. So let's talk about what we're going to be talking about for the next uh, hour or so. We're going to define what a virtual team is. We're going to then look at what are the elements that make a virtual team successful. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to build credibility, reliability, and trust in a virtual team. So when you hear the word virtual team, what comes to mind for you? What comes to mind? Remote locations. Remote locations. What else? The importance of technology. The importance of technology. Uh, what about the importance of technology? It needs to be, <laughs> needs to be <laughs> reliable. And yet we know that technology will absolutely fail. Wh wh what else when you hear virtual teams, what comes to mind? Language barriers. Excuse me? Language, Language barriers, absolutely. Cultural differences. Cultural differences. Cultural differences, absolutely. So the formal definition of a virtual team is a team that is geographically spread out and that communicates using information technologies in order to accomplish a specific goal. But let's look at two studies that talk to this definition. The first study was done by a guy named Tom Allen, and it was an MIT study, and he studied engineers. And what he wanted to find out is, how does distance impact communications? And get this, if you are next door, you have a 25% chance of communicating at least once a week. If you're 30 feet apart or more, you have a 10% chance of communicating at least once a week. But if you're 90 feet apart or more, it no longer matters whether you're 90 feet or 3,000 miles apart. Yeah, wow. Let's look at a second study, and we're going to talk about how these definitions relate back to the definition that we just looked at. The second study was a Bell Lab study. So imagine you were in a hospital corridor. You know how long they are, right? Well, if you're in the same corridor, you're five times as likely to collaborate than if you were on separate corridors. And it nosedives when you're on separate floors. So I have a question for you. Let's imagine you were working with your team in a building, but you were on a different floor. And you needed to talk to them about a routine matter. Stand up if you would use communication technologies in order to connect. So stand up if you would use it. We have an honest person here. All right, good. Tell me why, please. It's convenient. It's convenient. Tell us why really loud. It's, it's a typical tool we use in organization. It's what? Typical tool. Typical to, tool, even if you're in the same building. Speed. Speed, one more. So we know that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you were there. You'd hate to get some exercise. OK, thank you. For those of you who didn't stand up, please stand up and tell me why you would walk up or down a flight of stairs. So stand up if you didn't stand up before. That's most of you guys. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Just to have the face-to-face -face interaction. Ah, face to because, and why do you want the face-to-face -face interaction? Sometimes it's faster. Ah, it's faster and perhaps more accurate? OK. Face-to-face uh, -face interaction, you uh, get more meaning of out of the interaction. So not only what's said, but also uh, uh, cues that you can only see uh, in person. So your body language, your yes. facial expressions. Right, my head nodding. What does head nodding mean in a virtual environment? Virtual teams is all about building relationships. It's 90% about people. It's 10% about technology. Now, obviously, you need to have the technology to work effectively, but you can have all the technology in the world. If your people skills are not strong, if you don't build relationships on a continual basis, it doesn't matter what technology you have. It will fail you. So let me talk about the study and how it relates back to the definition. The teams that were truly geographically spread out performed better than the teams that were in the same building. And the reason is because these guys knew that they had to put processes and practices into place. The folks who were in the same building said, hey, we're not virtual. Why do we need to do anything? We're not virtual. 
And those actually failed more so than the teams that were geographically spread out. So remember the definition was the teams that were geographically spread out who used communication technologies in order to connect to accomplish a specific goal. That's what a virtual team is. So you may be in the same building, separate floors, you're virtual. So I want to ask you guys, when you hear virtual teams, what are the specific challenges that virtual teams face, specific to virtual teams? Raise your hand. It's very specific to virtual teams. Yes? Picking up on the nuance in some of the nonverbal communication. OK. Picking up nuances. Picking up silence. What does silence mean in a virtual environment? Right? Uh, does it mean I get it? Does it mean I agree? Does it mean I disagree? Does it mean I have absolutely no clue what you just said? What does silence mean? So you got to check it out. Say, hey, you know, I'm hearing silence on our virtual call, and I'm not sure what it means. Let's go around the virtual meeting room. Okay, what else? What else is specific to virtual teams? Yes? Capability of using the technology. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. Capability of using the technology. When I speak to clients and they say, oh, we know how to use the technology, and then I start drilling down. They know what button to push, but do they know how to use the technology to actually engage people? Do they know that in web conferencing, you can do the exact same thing as we're doing here? You can get into pairs. You can get into groups. You can pull. There are thousands of things you can do. And yet, most companies are unaware of how to use the technology to its fullest. So I'm going to go through this rather quickly. There's geographic distance. Obviously, I'm in one location, you're in another. We can't do very much about that. The second, and one of the challenges here, is that um, we can't read the body language. So often there's miscommunication. The second is temporal distance. Temporal distance is time zones. And so the challenge with temporal distance is how do we coordinate work? And the last difference is operational difference. So operational difference is about the processes that we put into place to help us work effectively together. Okay? And we can either uh, collaborate and do things that help us collaborate, like technology, or conspire to make it kind of hard to collaborate. So let me give you an example. So, and raise your hand if this resonates for you. You're in a virtual meeting, and you have people sitting around a teleconference table, and you have other people joining remote. Raise your hand. Yeah, most po folks. The problem is those people who are remote are going to feel a sense of disconnection, and they're going to feel out of the loop. And when they feel a sense of disconnection, what do you think they're doing? Working. 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 What else are they doing? Well. 39% of them are sleeping, 70% are multitasking, and 91% are daydreaming. That's what you're up against. So you want people on the same level playing field, which means that everybody is on their computer, not around a teleconference table. You want people on the same level playing field. So what makes a virtual team successful? There are a couple of things. There's two elements. The first element is social-emotional. And social-emotional is really about building relationships. It's things like communication. It's things like trust. The second element is task-related processes. Those are the things that we put into place to help our team contribute no more fully, like your status reports, uh, your virtual meetings, accountability. So I'm curious, what do you do to build relationships on your virtual team, specifically virtual team. What do you do? Talk one-on-one -on -one with them before engaging. Talk one-on-one. -on -one. Get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. Get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll take that one step further. Make sure that everybody on the team knows them. So once a month, have one person on the team give their backstory. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What's your background? What's your experience? It creates credibility, and it allows us to get to know the people. 
Okay, task-related processes. What do you do to make it work? There are things to do before a virtual meeting, during a virtual meeting, and after a virtual meeting. It is a process. It's not just about having the agenda. It's not just about making sure the technology works. Obviously important. There are other elements that you have to put into place before, during, and after a meeting. Okay, thank you. So we know what makes a virtual team successful. We also know there are challenges with virtual teams. And one of them is building trust. And we know that building trust takes longer in a virtual environment than it does in a face-to-face -face environment. Why do you think that might be? Well, we mentioned that in virtual teams, we can't read body language. And the ability to read body language and those signals builds trust. Absolutely. If we're in a face-to-face -face meeting and I'm leaning forward and I'm nodding my head, I'm giving you affirmation that what you're saying is like awesome, right? In a virtual environment, I could be nodding my head and you have no clue what I'm doing. Right. So that's one of the reasons. How about one other? Yes. Back there. Exactly. You don't have that chit chat, but you can create that chit chat. So how do you do that? At the beginning of a meeting, have while you are waiting exercise. So what does that look like? A while you are waiting exercise could be something like, um, tell us uh, a success you've had this week that you're proud of. Share a website with everybody on the team that would benefit them. You can also put a map of North America, if you're working with a North American team, and you're using something like a web conferencing tool, and say, use the pointer tool to show us where you are. Or use the pointer tool and show us where you want to be. I'm usually in Hawaii with a drink in my hand. I like it. <laughs> so another reason why trust takes longer to build is because in a virtual environment, we use something called task trust. And task trust is really, you know, you're doing the task and you're assuming that your teammates are actually going to be reliable, follow through, and as that happens, then of course, the trust builds. And while you're doing that, you're also building interpersonal trust. So why should we care? Because it takes four times as long to build trust in a virtual environment than in a face-to-face -face environment. And when you add cultural diversity into the mix, it adds 17 weeks for the team to perform as well. So trust is not something, it's not a one-time activity. It's an ongoing activity. Stephen Covey talks about an emotional bank account. And so in any relationship, you want to build that reservoir of trust. And the more you put in when something does happen, because it will happen, then that trust can still be sustained. So there's three elements of trust. There's reliability, I will do what I will say. Credibility, I know what I'm talking about. And intimacy, I, I develop close and accepting relationships. So let's look at each of these. So what I'd like you to do is turn to your neighbor and let's spend about two minutes and I'd like you to come up with one for each of these. How do you build intimacy? How do you demonstrate reliability? And how do you demonstrate credibility? So let's take about two minutes and then I'll call it. And let's come back together. So I'm curious, how do you build intimacy in a virtual environment? And we don't dim the lights. So how do you build intimacy in a virtual environment? Yes. This is what happened yesterday in our team meeting. And I work at home up to four times a week. So um, I asked everybody, you know, what what did they dress up for, or did they dress up for <laughs> Halloween? And then people started popping up on their video conference to show who they were in their costumes. So, um, awesome. I think like a sense of humor, no matter what project you're in, it doesn't matter. Sense of humor is very important for supporting the project. It doesn't matter what position you're in, whether you're the PM or not. 
um, it builds that uh, sort of team building uh, in addition to, it doesn't matter whether you're virtual or not. Humor is absolutely important, especially when technology fails or especially when there's stress. Humor is a great tool. So we talked about the backstory. What you can also do is showcase a person uh, every month. And you can ask them to volunteer themselves and say, for five minutes, showcase a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, what project you're really excited about. Uh, it could be something personal. It could be uh, something that you know, they're, they're really proud of that nobody else on the team knows. Showcase who you are. So you get to know their personality. You get to know a little bit about them. So with our, my virtual team, we have pizza lunches. And I know where everybody lives. I know what their favorite pizza is. I send it out to everybody at lunchtime. And if the time zone is different, then it might be coffee in the morning. And I'll just give you one caveat. The first time I did it, I got a call from the credit card company saying, did you really buy 10 pizzas? <laughs> Since then, I haven't had a problem. And no work. It's only time for social. No task-related talk at all. OK, let's go to the next. How do you demonstrate reliability? Let me hear some suggestions for reliability, please. Absolutely. <laughs> no brainer, but real important. And the last is how do you demonstrate credibility? How do you demonstrate credibility in a virtual environment? Uh, be accurate with uh, your information. Your be accurate with your data. It builds trust, doesn't it? And one last person around credibility. We have one person right up here. So that requires authentic communication. That requires you to be open. That requires you to make sure that when somebody does fail, that it's not, that it can almost be rewarded. Uh, that's really a whole other topic around creating rules of engagement for your team. Making sure that everybody understands what the expectations are and everybody's on the same page. Okay, so let's look at Let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. Intimacy. So I care about you, and I don't put my need above yours. So take the time to connect with everybody on a personal level. Pick up the phone in between meetings. What you can also do is have a virtual open door policy, which means every Monday at 11, PM, at 11 AM Eastern Tan Standard Time, people on your team know that you are available that they can come onto the web conference and say, hey, I need assistance with. And it can be personal, it can be task. Have coffee hour, same kind of thing as the pizza party. Pay attention to a person's tone of voice. So if you heard my tone of voice, you're hearing it face to face, you hear it online, and then one day you hear tension in my voice and you don't know what the tension is. It's really important to pick up the phone after the meeting and say, you know, I heard something in your voice. I'm not sure what it was. You know, would you like to share? What's going on for you? So you need to listen beyond the words. And we're going to do an exercise around that in a few minutes. <coughs> Give shout outs to people. So what does that mean? Often it's the manager's responsibility to give feedback, but it doesn't have to be the manager's responsibility. So if I gave feedback to Daniela, then Daniela, if I gave feedback to you in front of everybody at a team meeting, then it's Daniela's responsibility to connect with everybody on the team during the week. Because it'll be Daniela's responsibility to give some feedback about what somebody did really well at the next meeting. And then that person is responsible. So it really encourages people to connect with their virtual coworkers. I do what I say I will do, reliability. Well, it largely depends on reliability. So respond to communications. But let people know when. Am I going to get back to you within 24 hours, within 12 hours? Not, this is too vague. Respond to communications promptly. What does promptly mean? 
Talk to your team about what that actually means. Be on time for meetings. Communicate with predictability. So what does that mean? It means that those teams who were consciously aware and let people know when they were available and not available had an increase in trust. So it's important to let people know about your availability. Okay, credibility. First, you need to create strong relationships. One of the reasons to do that is we tend to build trust with people who we perceive are similar to us. So if I get to know you, and I kind of think you're similar, there's going to be an increase in trust just by that perception. Set clear expectations about what you can do and what you can't do. We don't need to know, do, know it all. And be transparent. So, what do you think is the biggest fear of the virtual worker? Turn to your neighbor and come up with what is the one biggest fear of the virtual worker? And let's come back together. What do you think is the biggest fear of the virtual worker? FOMO. Pardon me? FOMO. Yes. FOMO. Fear of missing out. Aha, uh -huh. fear of missing out. Yep. How about uh, another person, another group? What do you think? Yeah, here we go. Um, I would say like not having enough time to come to a mutual understanding or like the fear of extending the meeting. Okay, not having enough time for mutual understanding. So that really brings up our personality. And when we look at our personality, just imagine four people on our team. There's one person who says, one part of the team says, I can make the decision now, and we just got to get to it. It doesn't really matter whether it's right or it's wrong, we're going to do it. And somebody else saying is, we can't. We have to make sure that we research it. And we need to make sure that this is right. And then another person says, you know, I'm process oriented. And we need to see, we need to weigh the pros and cons. We need to make sure that we look at all the possible risks. And there's somebody else who says, I just want to socialize with you because it's so much fun. <laughs> They're saying, you know what, it's all about people first. It's all about people. So you have four personalities on your team. And each of them may have a different view of what's the biggest fear of the virtual worker. And you just addressed one. Well, the actual one is keeping people in the loop. I'm missing out. It's out of sight, out of mind. And there are really three main reasons for it. The first is, am I going to be able to grow and develop? OK. The second is, am I going to be kept in the loop? What often happens in a virtual environment is the folks who are face-to-face -face get information first. The folks who are remote don't. So they feel like, you know, why was I kept out of the loop? It kills trust, and it also hurts transparency. The third reason is, will I be passed over for a promotion? So let's look at, will I have opportunity to grow and develop? Now, if you're a manager, these are three questions you can ask. If you're a team member, you can sit down with your manager and say, I'd like to address these particular questions. So the first question is, what things would you like to get better at this month? And that question is saying, I'm invested in your progress. I'm invested in your development. The second question is, what's something you're better at now than you were last month? And that's saying, hey, you see, you are growing and developing. The third question is, what do you need more of? Anything you need more of, we're going to do more of it. And what do you need less of? What was your low point? And those are things that we're going to try to manage. Be positive as a manager and as a team member. The way you show up is the way your team members will show up. 
So you need to set the tone. Be aware of your tone of voice and how you come across. And make sure your body language supports your words. Can I have everybody stand up, please? I'd like as many people at the front of the room, please. You don't need paper, you don't need pens, you just need your bodies. Come on down. As many people, come on down. Leave all your papers down there, please. You knew I was going to do something like this, didn't you, Leora? <laughs> come on down. Everybody on the floor. Whoops. I need this. Come on down. There's lots of space. Move up, guys. Lots of space. Oh, dear. I have some bad news for you. And I'm warning you now, the bad news gets even worse as we go along. But you'll put up with it because you're PMs, right, Catherine? Right. Come, guys, come on down. Come on completely down, please. And you guys, come on down. So, I want you to walk over to somebody, shake their hand, and say hello the way you normally would. Hi, how you doing? Shake yeah. people's hands. Come on, let's move it. Shake people's hands. If you don't want to shake people's hands, shake people's hands. Just hi. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? Hello. How you doing? Hi. Hi. How you doing? Okay. And stop. Guys, guys, I have really bad news for you. I, I really have very bad news for you. And it's going to get worse. This is your fourth in one day unnecessary teleconference. You have a pile of work this high. You don't have time for this, and you know this teleconference drones on and on and on, and it's miserable. You know who's leading it, don't you? Yes, you do. All right. Before you shake somebody's hand, I want you to feel it in your body. This is, you don't have time. Whoever laughs, you don't have time for this. Shake somebody's hand, please. Hi. Hi, bye. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hi. Hey. Yeah, whatever. Hi. Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Okay. Shh. Life has just gotten worse. <laughs> what can you do? <sighs> you know this person. It's the status report from every time you get the status report from this person, it's wrong. Every time you send it back, it's wrong. You're wasting your time. She's wasting your time. You want to put your head on the table and just go to sleep. It's really a bad day. Well, before you shake somebody's hand, know that you are not shaking that person's hand. You're shaking somebody else's, but you know you're going to have to redo it. There's just no way. So feel it in your body. Before you walk over, take a deep breath and feel what you're feeling. And now walk over and shake somebody's hand, please. I know you're thinking your day. I know you're thinking your day can't get worse, right? It's gotten worse. It's Friday morning. You have such a good weekend plans. No, you don't. 
You've just been tasked with something that has to be ready Monday morning. Your plans with your significant other, your friend, your dog, is now done. You can't do it. So, again, I want you to feel it in your body. It's not feeling good, is it? Nah. And I want you to shake somebody's hand. Claire, I'm not, I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> there's, always, there's always one. <laughs> How many people feel that way? I'm out of here. Uh, you're done. I'm out of here. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before, before you're done, I have some news for you. You want to hear it? It's really good news. No, he's not fired. <laughs> Give the guy a break. Jeez. Because you've had such a hard week, I am sending you all to an expense paid trip to Hawaii. Okay. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I was going to say Kevin, but I thought he'd kill me. Before you go back to your chairs, I want you to tell me how that felt. I want you to think about when I was going through this just rotten day, which happens sometimes. How, does it, how did it feel? Exhausted, defeated. What other words can you describe? My jaw is tense. Pardon me? My jaw is tense. That's where my stress list is. Okay, so we start feeling stress in our body. Headache. Headache. What else? Oh, just completely preoccupied. What did you notice about other people's body language? Distance. Distance. Distance, yeah. What else? Tension. Tension. Yes. So why am I bringing this up in the context of virtual teams? I'll, I'll tell you why. Because in a virtual environment, people pick up on the energy. If you're on the call, people will hear it in your voice. So if people are having a bad day, because we all do at times, share it. You might be hearing something in my voice. You're hearing tension. You're hearing stress. It's not about you. Because what people will feel is that it's about them. So when we do these last couple slides, just hang out here. We're not going to go back. OK. So very quickly, in the next 30 seconds, name 10 body parts that have three letters. Shout it out. Arm. 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 Yeah. Leg. What else? Eye. Toe. Eye. What else? No. Ear. 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 OK. Let's go through them. Ear, woo-hoo, <laughs> lip, arm, leg, toe, hip, rib, jaw, gum. Conclusion, and this is the piece I want you to remember. We all know what to do. Do we all do what we know? And this is not for just this session. This is for all the sessions. We know what to do, but we have to apply what we learn. Otherwise, you're not going to make the most out of this great conference. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of the conference. <laughs>